Hi, my name is Sean Olson. Today I'm going to show you how to use some of the latest updates in Wallworm to create complex displacements inside of 3ds Max. Now I'm going to start with showing you a scene I'm working on. I'm building this in Max, but this is an exported scene in Hammer. And we've built all these displacements you can see through here inside of Max, including exporting all the textures. And this is the kind of thing we're doing. Now, traditionally with Wallworm, there's been a method of creating displacements that's way different than the way you would create them in Hammer. And a lot of Wallworm people have had problems with that. So we're going to go over some of these things. So first thing, we're going to open up Anvil. It's under Wallworm, Wallworm Anvil. The second thing I want you to do is make sure that if you're following this tutorial, make sure you're using version 3.31 or later of Anvil. If not, you should go get the latest one so that it has the same exact features and works the same as what I'm demonstrating. In the Displacements tab of Anvil, you'll see this group of controls called Create Displacements. These allow you to create displacements. Now, Traditionally, in Wallworm, you would create them with this Create Displacement at Helper. Whenever you click this, it would create a displacement wherever the helper is and if there had been no helper in the scene it would create one automatically. So the next displacement I add will be at this helper. In the center, the origin of this helper is going to be the center of the next displacement. Create another one and we can keep on creating them. If I move that helper it will create it somewhere else. Many people have not really felt comfortable with this method and would prefer something more like in Hammer. Well, I've added a couple new features and then we're going to discuss those. I'm going to zoom out a little here and show you a couple of the things that you should become familiar with if you're brand new. One is the grid and snap. If you click this button, it will always make the grid size match the current length and width of the displacements you're making. So if I click this, my grid size matches those. Now again, the displacements by default by using the old create displacement a helper method are always centered at these grid locations if you're at this grid size. So if I create a new one, it's going to be located at the center of that grid. Now, another thing is you should be familiar with using the snaps. Now when I press this grid and snap toggle button, it did turn on the snaps toggle, but I'm not currently snapping the grid unless this checkbox is on over here. If you don't have these items over here, you can right click anywhere in this menu in the command bar and choose snaps and it will bring up these options so you always want to snap to grid you can also right click your snaps toggle and choose grid points now if you're placing your displacements with this create displacement at helper function or if you're creating displacements by shift dragging them at locations There is something to keep in mind, especially if you already have geometry in the scene, and I'm going to demonstrate that. Say we want to lay out our map such that we now have a wall or block at this location. Now when I have this displacement here, it's not going to line up because it's at the, the pivot point of these. So there's ways around that. One is to change the grid spacing size to a smaller dimension. At this point, when you move your displacements around, you can snap them at places where they're going to line up more easy. And you can select multiple objects and make sure you highlight a grid point. And if you drag from there, they're all going to be snapped in the same locations. If you're working with certain dimension displacements, if you want to snap them and move them around more easily, choose a grid spacing that's half the size of your displacements. Now there's other options now. Now one of the newer features is for you to create your displacements from pre-created planes. So now you can actually just create a plane and whatever dimensions it is, it will create that displacement. Now it will use the current lengths and width segments to set the power. Now this is very important. In order for this function to work, your plane primitive must only use length segments of 4, 8, or 16. And the length segs must match the width segs. The, power, the length segs of 4 equals a power of 2 displacement. The length segs of 8 equals a power of 3. And a length segs of 16 equals a power of 4. Now I'm going to select, I'm going to create a few displacements here. If 
I select these three planes now and hit this Convert Planes button. And remember, this function is not reversible. Once you do it, it cannot be undone. I'm going to convert to planes. Those are now three displacements. And I can edit those and send them to, to Hammer now. I do need to point out, let me turn on edge facing here, that these displacements have the same kind of limitations that they do in Hammer for sewing purposes. Because they do not line up at the vertices on the, along the edges and they're not the same sizes, you can't sew these. So you have to be careful when you're making your own displacements this way. One of the things you might try is to turn on the snap to vertex toggle, click plane and choose auto grid. If you do this, it will snap to this vertex at the top of here and I can drag out my planes this way easily. And all you have to do is go close enough to where you see it snapping, the little snap icon, drag it to where you see it snapping to the next one, let go, and it will create that plane there. So I can now just create these displacements like this. And then if I select all this, it doesn't matter that I have that box primitive there because this function only works on planes. If I hit convert planes, those are now all displacements. Now I'm going to show you another one of the tools that we added recently, and that's if you want to move displacements. Now these displacements haven't been sculpted, so it's not a big deal. But say I wanted to move all of these over here after they've been edited, so let's sculpt these. So now one of the problems is moving this object, if you wanted to use snapping to vertices, no longer really makes it valid because you can't line up this object to be lined up in the same grid planes as you could previously. So there's this new move mode. If you click move mode, it's going to show the underlying brush faces basically and allows you to move them as if they were flat. So if I take this and move it over here, it doesn't matter how I had already sculpted it. Go out of move mode and now they're moved. And the reason you would want to do this is mostly for ones that you've already sculpted. It's hard to move them and get them lined up correctly. And now that they're here, and since they're lined up correctly, I can actually use the sew command to sew them. Again, if they're not lined up, if the underlying brushes are not lined up vertex to vertex, the sew command does not work. And it's very similar to the way it works in Hammer. So now let's go to the next way of creating displacements. And what we're going to do is create some more boxes that denote geometry. Okay, so we have this geometry, and we want to create displacements from these. To do that, there's a couple of options here. And I'm going to show you the different ways to implement these and the current limitations that they have and how to fix and deal with them. If I want to do specific faces on all these, kind of like in a hammer where you pick faces and then convert them into a displacement, what we'll want to do is apply a poly select, a poly select modifier to the selection. You can select them all at once. And then I'm going to say I'm going to want to turn these all into displacements. Now when you use this function, I'm about to show you the displacements that you create here are going to have the power, the power of the current displacement settings inside of Anvil. So if I have these at power 2, all of these are going to be power 2 that fit these faces. What I want to do is click this Faces to Displacements. If I click this, it will create a displacement on every face. Now, in the current version of Wallworm, there is a glitch that I haven't figured out yet that some faces are rotated incorrectly. The, what you can do to deal with that is select those that are rotated incorrectly and go over here and choose this minus 90 or plus 90. If you click one of those, oops, sorry, there was a visual glitch, it will rotate them in the, and make them fit on the face. I'm going to show you another technique and we're going to use the same faces and we're going to create new displacements. Now, if I want to delete all the displacements on this block, 
I can actually select all of these. And even though I have selected boxes here, I can select just the displacements because there's this select function in Anvil. When you collect it, when you press it, what it does is takes the current selection and filters out anything that's not a displacement. So if I select from here, all of the boxes that I had selected are no longer selected. So now if I hit delete on the keyboard, it's going to delete the displacements. So now we're going to show you the next function, and that's the paint displacements. Now this function is currently under development and only works on editable polys. So if I click the start painting button and click an object here, nothing is going to happen because these are not editable polys. These are in fact just box primitives. Now if I right click, I stop the function. What I need to do for this function to work is have my geometry converted to polys. So if I'm done and I know that these are the right dimensions and I don't need to mess with them, I can hit convert to editable poly. And now when I use this, I can start picking faces and it will start dropping displacements onto faces. Now again, this method had the exact same problem that we had earlier, and that is some of the faces are rotated incorrectly. You can right click to cancel this option, select those that are rotated incorrectly, and hit this minus 90. And now they're rotated correctly. At some point, that feature will be fixed and they'll be oriented correctly, but I don't have that yet. So I'm going to finish this video with a couple more functions here. One thing you'll notice is that all these displacements, I don't know if you can tell in the screen, their UVW mapping is such that each displacement, and this one goes from there to there, a UV will always fill it out completely. And this one is, is stretched out a different way. So you'll get it such that the, the UVWs are not all lined up correctly. The way to get around this kind of thing is to select all the displacements that you want to that are currently in the same plane. So these are all flattened that way. And then you can apply a planar mapping to it. If I apply that to all of these, now they're all using the same UVW and I can go over to the UVW and change the length and width of the tiling of this. So I know all of these boxes, these were all 512. So if I want each one to tile per, I can say 512, 512, and then now they're like that. And with the UVW, you can always go to its gizmo and actually move around the UVWs to where you want them for aligning. There are limitations because you have to find ways to map places that are uh, perpendicular. We can't apply the same UVW map to this face because it's not going to have the same projection of the UVW. So you'll have to learn techniques in Max to deal with those circumstances. Before I go on from there, I need to make this very clear that for displacements, you will never want to use anything at all other than planar UVWs. You can potentially also use box, but I would stick with planar as much as possible. Do not use cylinder, spherical, shrink wrap, and all these others. And do not try to use the unwrap editor unless you're keeping everything and filling up it in one UV space. So finally, what I'm going to show you is a function in the Anvil to lock the displacements. Right now, I can move this displacement however I want. However, I may come to a situation where I'm done with the displacements. I know they're exactly where they need to be. If I don't want to be bothered with worrying about moving them, I can select all of these and choose the lock function. All of the ones that I selected are now locked. So they cannot be moved. No matter where I try to drag it to, it cannot be moved. This is very convenient if you don't want to have to worry about accidentally selecting and, and messing them up. So if I select these objects, I can move those ones, but I cannot move my displacement. Now we haven't covered everything in the displacement tools, but there are some other videos and docs on using those. 
and I'll fill them out later. But for the moment, that's the end of this video. Again, my name is Sean Olson. I hope you learned something and find this useful. You can find more about the wallworm tools at wallworm.com. And you can learn more about me and various other things that I do at seanolson.net. Thank you and have a good day.